everyone, my name is Berry Dakara. I'm a lifestyle blogger at berrydakara.com. Um, I'm here today to talk about um, a pretty personal and sensitive topic, trying to conceive. And today I just kind of want to, I guess, share my truth, my raw truth about the I guess journey I hate the word journey not that I hate the word journey but like journey is so overused now anyways um, if you read my blog and you follow me on social media you know that for a year and a half now my husband and I have been trying to have children we started actively trying last January January of um, yeah, last January of um, 2015. This is April of 2016 now. And as of this particular point, we're not pregnant. At least I don't know that I'm pregnant. Hopefully I am, but um, right now we're not. And um, it's been a... It's been tough. It's been interesting. Um, I feel like there are different things that I want to touch on so I might just go back and forth and bounce all over the place but please stay with me and bear with me um, before we got married my cousin um, suggested that we try to get pregnant before the wedding she's like oh you know what try to get pregnant a month before your wedding because if you're one month pregnant at your wedding nobody will notice that you are pregnant and then when you have the baby after 10 months, everyone's like, oh, okay, it's nine months, you know, whatever. And I didn't listen to her. I was just like, oh, whatever. I really can't be bothered. Um, I had advice from other people, um, family members, friends are like, um, telling me that we should try to get pregnant as soon as possible. I'm in my um, early 30s, well, now going into mid 30s. Um, I'm in my early 30s and um, Something I kept hearing over and over was time is not on your side. So start trying now But my husband and I wanted to wait a little bit before like after the wedding to before we started trying and For whatever reason I thought it would be very easy to get pregnant and Like I have found out now. I think maybe it's very easy for some people and it just isn't as easy for other people um, the first month came, nothing, second month came, nothing, no, wait, yeah, second month came, nothing, the third month came, and my period was late, like, very late, almost 10 or 12 days late, and then when it came, I was kind of surprised, because I'm like, my period has never been this late, so I don't understand why I'm not pregnant, but... You know whatever I mean I cried I cried quite a bit but um, we kept on trying and somehow like at the beginning of last year I just knew for sure I'm like I'm definitely I'm having my baby this year or babies and it didn't happen and at the beginning of this year that was another of my um, I guess goals was to have my baby or our babies this year and um, it's April now and I think um, at some point maybe last month or so it I kind of came to the realization that because we're not pregnant right now it means I'm not gonna have my babies this year so I have to shift goals and hope I pray that next year is the time um, I did mention it to a lot of people it's not something that you go out and shout out about but um, cakes that's my husband and I we did a procedure early this year and um, spent a lot of money he, um, the hospital that we went to came based off based off of um, a lot of recommendations. So we were pretty confident and pretty sure that it was going to take, but unfortunately it didn't. Um, 
a friend of mine asked, she's like, ah, but what about all the money that you spent? So people will keep trying now. I'm like, no, that money was just for the one time. Like, the money's gone. And there are no baby or babies to speak of. And um, when I got my period um, after the procedure, it wasn't, it wasn't IVF, it was something similar. It's called an IUI. Um, when I got my period, um, it was really, really hard. I broke down at work and cried my eyes out. I called my mom and I should have mentioned that this might be an emotional video. So if you have tissues, please bring them out. I called my mom and, you know, she tried to console me and she tried to pray for me and, um, um, I don't know, somehow I kind of, I got through the month. Although the following week I found out that uh, um, someone who I dated in the past, my ex-boyfriend, he and his wife were pregnant and um, I was happy for them. And that's something about um, when you're trying to conceive and you find out that other people who have got married after you, when they announce their pregnancies, maybe not to you, or maybe you see a pregnancy announcement online, it's, you go through, a, a, you go through varying emotions. Um, there's a little bit of anger, not towards them, but almost, almost at God, because it's like, how come you're blessing them, giving them these children? And I've been trying for a while, we've been trying for a while, and it's not happening. How come, what's going on, God? There's um, jealousy, you have to be truthful, there is jealousy because they have this thing that you've been wanting for, I don't know whether it's a couple of months or whether it's like 20 years, there's a little bit of jealousy. Um, there's a feeling of, you feel like maybe God doesn't love you or you ask yourself, maybe did I commit some sin from before that God is punishing me for? There are all these things that run through your mind, you know, and um, what I try to do is, um, what I try to do is I just ask God for peace because it's like, God, if you're not going to give me my children now that we've been praying for, then at least give me your peace about it. Give me your peace that passes understanding. Because there's no other way I know how to keep moving forward. It's, uh, sorry. You pray for peace. And that's something I try to do um, often. Um, there's some things that people tell you. Sometimes you get a lot of unsolicited advice or suggestions. Sometimes, you know, it is solicited. You have gone to you to other people and talked about it like I have. And then you get um, emails, you get comments and all of that. But like, there's so many things that you hear as someone who has been trying for a while. And it runs the gamut. Um, let's see, some of the things that I've been told to do or asked. Uh, a friend of mine at work is like, you know what, I think that the reason why you people haven't conceived is because you're not relaxed during sex. Oh, I'm sorry, were you in the bedroom with me when I was having sex with my husband? Were you there when we were making love? How do you know I'm not relaxed? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Maybe it's not to relax that I mean. Um, you are not really having fun. Okay. Again, are you in the bedroom with me and my husband when we are making love? Are you there when we are being intimate? No, you're not. So you cannot assume that we are not relaxed. You cannot assume that we are not having fun. Um, I've also heard... Well, that was one of the reasons why I stopped um, working out last year. I was working out last year because I wanted to lose um, about 20 pounds. I lost 14. 
and then I started getting comments from here and there that maybe you're working out too hard maybe you need to stop working out if you stop working out then you'll get pregnant and at first I'm like oh god can you guys just leave me alone you know with the with the advice but I'd stopped working out and um, the weight started coming back on and I still wasn't working out but there was no baby or anything okay um, I heard uh, I met someone who said you know what it's because you don't know how to pray that's why you're not pregnant like I had met this woman five minutes before I was talking to my aunt my aunt introduced me to her and this woman literally said to me it's because you don't know how to pray okay um I've actually had someone say directly to my face that it is my fault that I'm not pregnant that um they have given me all this advice and things to do I told you to tie this thing around your waist I haven't done it that's why you're not pregnant here's the thing about <clears throat> we're Nigerians so there's a lot of um, spirituality um, in our lives so you get a lot of spiritual advice I have gotten things from um, I've heard stuff said to me said to cakes um, okay you need to drink olive oil every day you need to cover your head with olive oil every day you need to take Holy Communion you need to um, oh my pastor prayed over this item put it under your bed my pastor prayed over this item you know tie it around your waist um, you need to do this you need to do that oh um, I'm going to go to this pastor or this evangelist or whatever and you need to send money because they prayed for you and you know the baby is coming or babies are coming and it's a very tricky thing for me because <clears throat> on the one hand um, I believe that God uses can use people to give you specific directions things to do in order for um, stuff that you're praying for to happen it's happened in the Bible so many times you know I know that but then at the same time there's this other part of me that's like but you know God doesn't necessarily doesn't he doesn't need me to do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten he doesn't need to, for me to get pregnant he doesn't need me to pay for for prayer why are we even praying, paying for prayer anyways but you know what that's another topic for another day I won't even go into that before I start getting a lot of um, hateful comments um but yeah um here's what I would say to those people who want to give spiritual advice how about you say to me and if you know someone else who is, has been trying to conceive how about instead of you need to do this you need to do this you need to do that how about I know it's hard I may not know what you're going through but I know that it's tough but I am praying for you that's it by saying that you're showing empathy you're showing some kind of sympathy and you're also praying for the person you don't know how many times the other person may have been fasting. You don't know how long they've been fasting for. You don't know how long they've been praying for. You don't know if they've gotten on their knees and cried out in anger and cried out in despair and cried out begging, God, please just give me my children. Please just give me my child. You don't know. So you are in no position, no position to talk to them and tell them you're not praying well. You don't know how to pray. You're doing this or you're doing that. If you truly love me, if you truly love this woman who is trying to have children, just tell her that you're praying for her. That's good enough. Pray with her. You know, um, don't, don't make it a thing of 
don't make it something where at the end of the day she feels bad about herself and she's wondering or oh, maybe I need to take off my clothes at night and pray because some people that believe that maybe I need to wake up at 12 a.m. then 3 a.m. then 6 a.m. you don't know everybody's prayer life is different there's no one um, there's no one I guess formula of praying apart from the one that you know Jesus gave to us the Lord's Prayer um, being in this position I've also noticed that some things that probably I wouldn't have batted my eyelids at before or I wouldn't have taken at heart taking to heart before um, feel a little bit different now I was watching the news or I was reading news last year and um, do you guys remember the little boy sorry do you guys remember the little boy that was washed up on shore because um oh with his parents because they're trying to um the refugees the little boy the real little refugee boy um I couldn't look at the picture for a very very long time I didn't want to see it and then um there was news of um, I think it was a six month old that was gunned down he and his parents were gunned down in South America because of drug violence and those stories hit me so hard because I'm like there's so many women out there in the world there's so many couples out there in the world who are trying to have children and children are dying indiscriminately <laughs> Children are dying from violence. Children are dying for no reason. And you just don't understand why. Yes, as God, like, God, why do you allow this thing to happen to children? Maybe on the one hand, it's like, well, you know, maybe it's a good thing uh, I'm not pregnant yet because I don't know if I want my children to see what the world can be like but you know, at the end of the day you really want children oh. and um things like that begin to affect you um i was told the other day of a lady who miscarried and i cried i cried and cried i don't know her i've never met her in my life but i cried because She's probably been trying to be pregnant for a long time and then she gets pregnant and loses the child. I don't know why God allows it. I really don't know why. Like I said, it's just to pray for peace. A peace that passes understanding because exactly you don't understand. You don't know why. So you need a peace that covers that um, not knowing. That covers that not understanding. Um, <clears throat> we're still trying um, I, I don't know 100% how my husband deals with it it's kind of a hard topic to talk about because sometimes maybe in the back of your mind you're wondering this man doesn't understand what I'm going through. He's not the one who, whose um, body is having the period, so he doesn't really understand it. But um, I know that he feels the same hurt, and I know that he prays for me, and I'm very thankful for he cakes. And um, I, just, I love you, and I hope that. And sometimes it makes me sad because I see him with other children. <laughs> I see him with my with our nieces and our nephews and he'll be such a great father and I just can't wait for him. I can't wait for us to have our children so that he can show them that much love. Um sorry. Um I know that they're coming. I know that my babies, my babies, I know that you're coming. We have your names picked up already. 
I have your nickname just picked out already and I know that you're coming. I know that you're coming. Your parents love you. Your extended family, we're all so excited and they're all waiting um, to meet you. So um, I guess we'll just keep being patient and wait for God's timing. Um, <clears throat> some people might say that I'm doing this video because I want attention. But that couldn't be further from the truth. There are a lot of women who are in my position who feel like they are alone. But you know what? You're not alone. You're not the only woman who's going through this. Your situation might be longer than mine, a lot longer than mine. Your situation might be shorter than mine. But I'm just here to tell you that you're not alone. There is nothing wrong with you. Don't allow anyone, don't allow anybody to talk down to you. Don't allow anybody to bring you down or to tear you down. Because you know what? You might doubt it, but God does love you. He loves every one of us. In Romans, I think it's 7 or is it 8, it says nothing can separate us from God's love. Nothing. So just know that God loves you. Or that I love you. I might not know you. But I do love you and I'm praying for you as well. I pray that you have your children soon, sooner rather than later. I know you hear testimonies of people who have waited for like 20 years or 30 years, you know, to have children. <laughs> and I joke about it. I'm like, God, please, I don't want that testimony. Oh, please don't use me for that testimony. Use me for something else. Just not that testimony. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, just wanted to say. You're not alone, <clears throat> and I pray that you have your children as soon as possible. Um, I know maybe there might be some who who will need to get to a point where you're looking at other options. Um, I guess when that bridge comes, you'll cross it. But um, yeah. Just stay strong. Pray as much as you want to. Pray as much as you need to. Cry as much as you want to. Um, if you need to talk to somebody about it, feel free to do it. Um, if you want to keep it inside, um, I'm not one to keep things inside. I want to talk. I mean, obviously, I'm doing a vlog right now, so <laughs> that's going to be online. So, um, if you need to keep it inside, um, I would at least say, at least talk to God. Um, but if you are talking to someone about it, find someone who's trusted and who will pray with you. Someone who has your best wishes at heart. And if, for any reason, you can't find anyone, you can email me. BerryDakara at gmail dot com um i might not have the right words to say to you but at least you know that someone out there cares and so i think that's where i'm going to end it i want to say thank you to all my family and my friends and my blog readers who are the best readers out there sorry you sorry to all the bloggers but my own bloggers my own blog readers they're the best out there thank you for all your comments thank you for all your emails thank you for your messages on whatsapp and snapchat and instagram twitter everything thank you guys so much for your support i thank you for all your prayers and I just want to say God bless you and um, yeah that's it and um, sorry for making you cry if I did <laughs> that was not my intent um, yeah thanks for watching and uh, I love you take care God bless